welcome tech enthusiast and cyber adventurers to the Fifi show. Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting uh, season of the Fifi show, the new episode. I am Shivani, your host, and I have been joined by very tech savvy Kumail today. And today we will be diving into the exciting world of Internet of Things. And, you know, we will explore its rise and why it is crucial to secure these interconnected devices. So, Kamil, like, you know, IoT have been like the talk of the town and, you know, everyone everywhere is like using IoT in their personal lives as well. Like, do you want to simplify it for our listeners? Like, what is IoT and, you know, how it is affecting us? IoT, uh, it says Internet of Things. So, there's two words, Internet and Things. So, anything that is connected to Internet via a network, physically or wireless, is an IoT. So nowadays, uh, as the technology is evolving, everything is getting connected, interconnected to each other. So previously, we didn't have no watch, smart watches was not there, but someone thought, okay, it's time to connect it to internet. So now it has internet and it is IoT. Like that, there are many devices uh, which have been connected to internet for your and mine advantage. Like if you want to come home and you want your air conditioner to be on so you can just select in your app you want your lights you don't want to go and turn on the button you want to control it from your phone there you go like that there are many 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 different devices okay cctv cameras however these devices have flaws in it okay because they are not constantly being updated and even if there are updates a gen a end user doesn't remember to always keep updating them you know that there is a security flaw which is really technical only technical people know okay there's a new vulnerability and a lot of people don't even know what is a vulnerability so vulnerability is a, a loophole a problem in a device uh so till the time they send an update a lot of devices have been compromised so Absolutely. that is one major risk with uh, regards to IoT and that is IoT. Anything which is yeah. connected to internet is IoT. Now just imagine these days even toasters are connected to internet, you know. <laughs> you can yeah, monitor, uh, you know, how you want your toast to be. It should be like, you yeah, know, I actually, uh, Yeah, I actually saw a movie uh, where uh, it was a movie or it was a YouTube video where it was just an imaginary attack where all the devices were hacked and the toaster is throwing buns out and everything, the light is turning on and off, mm -hmm. you know, so that would scare someone. Like imagine if you sit here and, and maybe your uh, light is turning on and off and, and then you get a message or, or you know something that you are hacked. So that is going to be tough for people to uh, process. Absolutely, absolutely. I think this there was a scene in Avengers as well, you know, where they were all fighting and all of the cars were suddenly falling off from the buildings, you know, because they had been to it or something. So just imagine how interconnected everything is and we don't even realize how it has inf infiltrated into our lives. Like, you know, with Alexa, and, you know, it always has been like, you know, Alexa is listening to everything. So be careful. I'm not sure how much that is true, <laughs> but it's like yeah, talking. It is. It is so true. Like if you know about this browser, Shodan, S H O D A N dot I O. If you go there, there are I, I won't say a million, but like hundreds of thousands of openly available devices which you can just visit there and you can find and you can have access to it you can have access wow. to their routers you can have access to their devices you can have access to their cctv cameras so you can be seeing what a person is doing up and they don't even know like when i was studying when i was yeah. researching i would go to show that and i would just put an ip range or there would be a list of ip you can just select and you can just see it live like like a signal mm -hmm. where it's it's a red light or whatever or it's someone's house or it's someone's warehouse or it's someone's uh you know facility <clears throat> which you can that's, see from there that is quite easy uh, that's scary that. as well that is scary and even if it's not like that uh then there's another big problem mm -hmm. which is of default passwords 
Okay, so for me, if uh, I use a tool to just scan a range of IP, for, for example, now I don't want to go into the exact IP ranges, but if you consider one to hundred, okay, so if I put this range of IP, 192.1.1.1 to 192. Point whatever the range is, I can scan it and I can see which are the available devices. Okay, and then I can put some filters to see if it is what kind of a device it is. Is it a router? It is a CCTV camera. And if it is a CCTV camera, you can go and you can use default password list. So a lot of people, when they get CCTV cameras, they don't bother changing the passwords. It's usually admin, admin, admin one, two, three, four, five. And there are lists out, available out there, which can be used to brute force it. And you can have access to anyone's camera if they haven't changed the password. So that is scary. Yeah. This is like a lot of security, uh, you know, implications with the interconnected devices where where I see from because the examples that you have shared maybe you know uh, folks from cyber security domain would relate to but if you know we have to talk about Liam and he wouldn't know Shodan exists and you know someone can watch him remotely doing something even you know if I'm having my phone in my hand uh, <laughs> people can get into my phone's camera and look at me what I'm doing currently so that's how uh, things are happening these days you know have you seen I, I was just scrolling through these Instagram uh, reels, you know, and I, I I saw this reel where they were t telling about they click your pictures without telling you constantly. Uh, and it was captured via an infrared uh, ray or, or, or an infrared camera. So just imagine like everybody knows what we are doing and we are just not safe or maybe safe is not not the right word maybe not protected and uh, and we yeah. have invited these things into our lives it's not something like you know it has been enforced we have invited these things into our lives you know alexa turn on the light so <laughs> so just it is, imagine it is in a way convenient but everything which comes with convenience may come with some threats too absolutely so, like, uh, what what are the security challenges like you see Komail in this, like, you know, have with IOTs, what challenges do people face? And, you know, for normal listeners, those who are not from this domain, how can they, like, safeguard to a certain extent, like, if you would like to add that point? Yeah. Uh, now, IOT has different kind of threats. It depends on mm -hmm. what kind of a device it is. Uh, so now I spoke about CCTV cameras, which can have password attack, as I told you. Uh, and then there's availability on internet. Now there are the mm -hmm. different kind of more devices, okay, which are really complex to hack, but it can be done with uh, a team of hackers who are really, really into hacking and they do it. So now there are devices which are used in medical, which are used in hospitals to do operations, to uh, to do some kind of, you know, surgeries where there are ro robots involved and, and, and many other things are involved in it. So when we talk about that, there have been incidents in the past where those devices were hacked while the operation is happening. So if imagine your life is at threat, okay? So these yeah. uh, attacks are not just uh, taking your pictures or your messages, but mm -hmm. it is risking health, which is critical, okay? And and to safeguard those things, it is not an end user's job, okay? There are some parts yeah. where an end user can do, but it revolves mostly around the companies who are creating those tools and who are manufacturing those and who are developing yeah. those softwares. They need to make sure that they are well tested and as per the technology evolves, they need to update the system Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Because I have seen, you know, ro robots doing surgeries and, you know, robotic arms being, you know, doing certain kind of procedures. Just imagine if they are hacked. I think that's why recently, uh, I believe FDA have come up come up with some kind of guidelines for these kind of machineries in in terms of cyber security and how people should be following uh, the machinery manufacturers yeah, so every yeah. big company who deals with 
personal information or sensitive information or something which can be attacked they need to have some sort of compliance some sort of governance uh, you know where they need to have certain policies in place Absolutely. to follow that is really and important this this actually um, i remember this uh, attack that happened like few years back on a fish tank so hackers uh, yeah hackers uh, attacked the fish tank which was connected to the internet in, of a casino and they yeah. entered the casino uh, infrastructure via that interconnected uh, fish tank and that fish tank was so tech savvy it used to like monitor the water temperature it used to you know uh, schedule the feeding of the fishes and you know they check get into the infrastructure check like how the traffic is going and they entered into the casino infra so these kinds of things are happening and you know when i read such things there's a very good article on forbes that i read like you know some time back while i was researching on this so just imagine like how things are uh, getting diversified in this space and people are usually coming up with the uh, iot devices to make life simple and with simplicity of life there is like lot of added responsibility <laughs> towards it so yes. even for me my tv my phone my laptop my ipad my watch everything is connected on my home network so what what can i do like you know to maybe a simple thing to do like you know so that my network is so safe first you need to see what things are around you so yeah. uh, usually uh, we won't have medical devices at home so that's a part so that's like the high level thing by talking about a regular place for example my house uh, we have this uh, fan which turns on with the remote okay so now in that fan that is just connected to the wifi and to me okay so now the best thing which you can do is to secure your wifi because if your wifi is hacked that's when those devices can be hacked first thing first okay so the main source of connectivity you need to secure that okay so that is your router so if your router has a default password yeah. uh, a lot of people have router default passwords which are on the back side of the router so when you flip mm-hmm. your router the admin admin 12345 yes absolutely admin you know, admin so these are the basic password people are still using <laughs> Yes and nobody updates it even yeah, the companies yeah. don't update it so yeah. uh, a long a long time ago i was reading this article that that was for company hick vision h i k vision so they okay. develop a lot of cameras okay and they usually used to have uh default passwords and then it came mm-hmm. into the news that there was a mass attack on them and after like like recently just like 3 mm-hmm. or 4 years ago they started changing the password the default password is now system generated like a long phrase key which is mm-hmm. generated by them which they are putting using right now which they should have done when since the starting so all those attacks would have been stopped but changing your password and that is the first thing second thing is keeping your software up to date so whenever you get an update make sure please 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 get an update done uh usually we get an update on our phone and our laptops make sure you even update your watches your smart watches uh if you have camera systems you should definitely update the firmware you just have to go go to your router setting that's simple and just yeah. go check for updates and please update it because you never know one weak point they just need an entry point <laughs> once they come through your camera maybe that that's just a way of explaining okay if they come through your camera they can easily go to your computer and then deploy mm-hmm. a malware there and once they have a malware they can do anything with you they can have mm-hmm. ransomware in it if it's a business and ransomware is really really trending right now uh yeah. because uh it's a big thing it's a money making business you know now yeah. there is ransomware as a service so yeah. in that or you know softwares provided by uh the bad bad guys and they are selling this softwares on a commission basis to their users who then attack other companies and then ask for ransom ask for money 
and it's it's uh, if not million it's a billion dollar industry there. Yeah. so uh, that's big big money in there you know, and people it, it, are not aware of these stuff so this is the right time this is 2024 ai is on the way and ai is going to affect the attack surface like anything okay because yeah. all these attacks they are somehow interconnected with phishing mm-hmm. and social Okay, and recently I wrote an article uh, on how ChatGPT, uh, the AI thing, can be used to develop a lot of uh, phishing uh, simulations, a lot of phishing uh, uh, campaigns in one click. Like earlier, when I was working for a company, so my role over there was to generate phishing campaigns for our clients. Okay, so we would send them uh, uh, videos, short videos of this, this, this attack. And once they have watched the videos, we would send them a phishing with the, with the approval of C-level management. Only the top people would know and rest of the employees would not know it. And we would run a phishing campaign. So I would sit myself and develop the campaigns. Okay, this offer, Legoland this free pass, free parking, free ticket, free travel. So I was sitting and making it, it took me a whole day to make 10 of those. Now I can make a hundred in two minutes. So attackers are gonna use that to expand the surface of attack and twist people's mind. Earlier they used Absolutely. to be spelling mistakes when an attacker would type the Not email now. and spelling mistakes. Or anymore. You can just type an email and then tell Chat GPT or any other tool which you would like to use. Just just type, make it sound natural, or make it sound like a human, and then see the results. It will make it sound like a human, and it does sound like that. And that is so scary. But uh, I believe, apart from uh, it uh, boosting the attackers, mm-hmm. it will also help with the defense uh, because. Uh, with the help of AI, we can improve our detection system. We can improve how our systems uh, uh, find out the problems in it. I yeah, think that's, so that's the in- enterprise level solutions that we can look at uh, at you know securing the IoT devices because that's the future, and you know we need to heavily invest or maybe you know train our workforce also for upcoming things because. Technology is just changing every day and just imagine this is whole just a vicious circle that you just explained. Imagine one IoT device and then what it can lead to and then, you know, getting into your uh, infrastructure, launching, putting up a malware, you know, even that can be done. So just imagine, it's like... It's like we are living in a very unpredictable uh, (laughs) world right now. There are a lot of people who don't even uh, who are not even in touch with technology. That's what I realized yeah. when I was in USA. Uh, I, I uh, there are great great people in America, okay, but there <clears> is <throat> so a lot of people who are who are not even close to technology. Like a, a, a dude Absolutely. came up to me and then he asked me for a job or something, and I told him, "All right, take down my number and text me a WhatsApp." And he didn't know what a WhatsApp is. What? My the goodness, we were like 18 <laughs> years old, dude. And, and I was like, okay, this is a moment of realization mm-hmm. where we are living, whether our smart computers, AI, yeah. cyber security, we know this because we are into it, we study it, we read about it. But now it is a time where everyone, even in your family, leave your office environment that mm-hmm. has been taken care of by your IT teams, okay, or your security teams, but for your personal level. Everyone should know about at least the basic attacks, like how Absolutely. phishing works, what is password management, how do you take care of your own devices, how do you take care of your information, uh, even on social media. You know, you cannot be posting everything wherever you go, whatever you do, whoever you mm-hmm. go with. That is really, really scary. I don't know. Yeah, that that's like you know, I was like taken aback. Like people don't know what WhatsApp is. Like. We are living in a world which is like completely on the palm of our hands and you know there are people who don't know what WhatsApp is. It's like yeah. it, it's scary and you know these people become uh, most of the attack uh, uh, baits for the attackers. They, they are the people who get you know gullible people, those who are naive and you know they become the target. So that you know people can extract okay. something from yeah, that. These people, they also the social engineering. Okay, social engineering is a big thing. Today we are on IoT. I don't want to go mm. to social engineering. It's a huge yeah. topic. <laughs> but that is something 
interesting which uh, i myself is fond of and i i i enjoy how people can be manipulated mm. uh, but also that is scary okay yes, we we it, it yeah it, we it, did it, ah. we did this podcast like uh, with our uh, last host yeah, on social engineering so it was a very good discussion that went but like you know it's it's all interconnected if you see from a very uh, birds eye view perspective even if i talk about iot so even if you are connected it will lead you to that way where you know social engineering is done just imagine you spoke about shodan and you know how people can see you from where you are sitting even if i'm sitting here i can open and i can see who is doing something in canada and just imagine the invasion of privacy it's like you know dark web happening all together <laughs> if you have seen certain movies uh there was this unfriended dark web where you know he got got a laptop from the alley and he opened it and suddenly uh, you know he entered into something and the other person started watching him what he was doing on that laptop and that person is like you know texting him like you know you are doing this now and you are doing this now just imagine everything is being captured it's it's same as like i'm sitting here and someone is like into my system and telling me i'm doing an interview with komil so <laughs> people are gullible as you said you use the right yeah. word people don't know it like that's yeah. happening and can be done you know because they don't mm. understand the concept of malware they don't understand the, you know but but our target should be as a human uh, to be mm. to make it as simple as possible for a layman yes. to understand it run campaigns run awareness and instead of having uh useless posters on the highway we should also right. have some sort of awareness campaigns everywhere like it should be a part of government program government initiative to mm-hmm. aware the people uh where they should deploy a proper team right. of experts who are responsible to raise awareness and there should be a target and there should be a deadline where they set a time period that in the next 2 years at least we have to aware 10 million people yeah uh, basically if if you see like you know we have these uh, cyber security awareness month by cisa they usually have it in october the month long uh, cyber security awareness campaigns they run where they tell them what to do and even you know they they teach very basic stuff like about passwords keeping your software up to date and you know never click on any phishing emails but still people go ahead and click on that link where you say you know i receive messages like your ups parcel is not big click on it to claim it and people will click on it like you know Exactly. Just UPS. I made the same video. If you go to my profile, you will yeah. see like three posts before I recorded the whole yeah. thing where I received the message, and then yes. you go there and it asks you for like nine dollars for re-delivery. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, <clears throat> are, uh, maybe extra smart, they would think that okay, I think I'm going to receive a parcel. Let me just see. It's nine bucks. Maybe I can yeah. receive someone else's yeah. parcel. So that is your downfall. That yeah. going to be you're not going to receive nothing but you're going to end up giving yeah. your credit card info and you're going to be lured there. So Absolutely. that is same. So uh, I would like to share about an attack which uh, I read about. It happened in 2016 which was a long time ago. However, it was one of the big one because uh, the total numbers of uh, devices which were compromised were more than 600,000 devices. Okay? And now uh, we're going to talk about another type of security thing which can be done okay so that is botnet okay so mm-hmm. everyone about denial of service that is dos attack ddos attack uh, so basically what a ddos attack or a dos attack does is it sends request to a server or a website and when there are too many requests uh, the server goes down and when a legit user is trying to visit the website or visit the server it will not let them happen for example uh, let's consider amazon so an amazon can take maybe 100000 users at a time what if i send 100000 fake request already so then the server will go down so that is basically a dot attack okay so what happened is uh 
a group of hackers they found a flaw in the systems okay and they went to one device and then from one device they kept connecting others 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 and like that they went to 600,000 devices and then they put some sort of botnet in there okay so botnet what it does is it connects the all the devices and makes it like an mm. army and then we can use all of those devices to attack on someone's server so that is That's a complicated crazy. attack which uh, actually exists right now and has been happening. So uh, that's just what I wanted to share. So that is botnet and that's how it works. It happened on IoT device. So imagine all the cameras being hacked and then they are used to send requests somehow, you know, from commands or, yeah. or maybe all the cameras are hacked and then they come to your computer and from your computer, they can send requests or, or perform other attacks, other kind of attacks. Yeah. Wow. Just imagine the interconnected devices yeah. and that is major, major. And for companies, mm -hmm. that is the loss as well. So imagine mm -hmm. if your data is compromised and or your mm -hmm. devices are compromised. And if your devices are used to perform those attacks, you're gonna be yeah. in a lot of trouble. Okay, in, in regards with compliance, laws, a reputation, business mm -hmm. outage. Uh, and I uh, you know, and I think this becomes yeah this becomes a little difficult to detect as well like you 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 might not even know because they might be using like various uh, devices and you know we, we we it will be very difficult to detect like where this is coming from and so it has and, to and, and a huge problem uh, which the industry <clears throat> faces with IT is all these tiny little devices they transfer a lot of data interconnectedly. So when there is a lot of transfer of data, it is even difficult to figure out what exactly is happening. Okay, so that is like a major thing because those are just packets, like it's like small signals in your wire or in your Wi-Fi or in your internet, which which is transferring. So that is really scary. And because of such huge amount of data, it is hard to process and to figure out what exactly happened then you need to do the forensics and this and that but in the first place a company should have those measures where they either have a system uh, where they are monitoring their moves so there are many different tools which you can see like there is wireshark uh, which is right. uh, a really great tool which is uh, used to network the uh, which is used to monitor the network activity yeah. in which if if your uh, if your outbound traffic is a lot, the the software, the Wireshark, will make a spike. So you can see mm -hmm. that regular. It packets will analyze. Yes, it will analyze your uh, packets. Yes. Yeah, you can analyze yourself, but that is again technical. Okay, not a regular mm -hmm. person is gonna go download mm -hmm. Wireshark and see the network activity mm -hmm. like that's <laughs> strange to even recommend someone. But I'm just yeah. sharing it so you know some some like, tech savvy people would like yes. to see that. Yes, and like uh, as we have like OWASP for web and all, uh, we have for web, mobile APIs. Do we have some similar to uh, this for IoT as well? Like, are yes, there any absolutely. standards? yeah uh um we can uh just visit if if uh there is a possibility i can uh share my screen yes. and i can show you the oas top 10 of iot okay so all you have to do is just go to internet and type oas mm -hmm. iot top 10 and you will visit the website so i'll just uh, share my screen sure, and sure. uh for you so you can see it properly okay can you see my screen over here just uh, OAS top 10 yep. IoT. Okay, so OAS is a big uh, <coughs> association, I would say, or it's a, it's a project, okay, which uh, displays the top vulnerabilities currently happening. So there would be OAS top 10 for different uh, types of devices or different types of infrastructure, you know. So this is for IoT. However, uh, when you come here, here it will explain you about IoT, what is it, was it that. But when you come here and click up here of was IoT top 10, it will display you over here. You can see oh, where did it go? 
the image was good it just just good yes anyway, <laughs> so we can, yeah we can also read it over here uh, but there's one another thing which i didn't like is uh, if you see it's 2018 18 which is yeah later like it's like 5 years ago in 5 years the whole nation changes the whole technology base <laughs> changes i think there should be an update in here maybe we should do something and contribute to it mm-hmm. <laughs> okay yes. and now let's read it i'm not going to explain everything uh, but uh, the first one is weak guessable or hard coded password i think we already talk about it the first one you even which i mentioned was the password like you need to change your password so if you have a weak password or a hard coded hard coded is the default password so if that is there you want to trace so like that there are 10 different attacks insecure network insecure ecosystem interface lack of update insecure or outdated components insufficient privacy protection insecure data transfer and storage so even when you transfer the data or store it make sure it's encrypted you know uh, mm. lack of device management uh, insecure default setting lack of physical hardening so uh, mm. these are the top 10 there would be more but these are the most used attacks or most common attacks as per 2018 and maybe till 2023 or 2024 then there should be a few more i'm guessing definitely like you know just the one we were talking about the ddos uh, attack it's like the new you know uh, spark for the okay. iot <laughs> yeah see it's not mentioned away <laughs> yeah it is it is not mentioned you know uh, anything can happen in a day 5 years is a long time frame but yes if uh, this this actually i remember this uh, movie from netflix you know uh, leave the world behind and you know it 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 talks about a cyber attack that happens on the entire world where they have like uh, to confuse people they have hacked into the entire world system and you know you see there is one scene where there are a lot of teslas bumping into each other so yeah yeah we absolutely forgot <laughs> mentioning the cars the smart cars that's a big big <laughs> thing thank you for uh, bringing it yes. up because uh, uh, these cars they have uh, technology uh, where you can remotely unlock and lock your car and mm-hmm. there are softwares inside your car which can be hacked yeah you were right in teslas correct so there is this device which i have ordered already i forgot to bring it but it mm-hmm. will arrive to me in a few days and i'm going to make a video about it i'll just show it to you on the internet it, it is oh. called uh, wait a second flipper <laughs> it is called flipper yeah flipper 0 Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it's because I want to test it yeah. personally and uh you can uh, actually order it online. It's a device like this. Yeah. Uh, this I is banned in this is banned in India, I believe. You cannot oh, get it real? in India. I, I'm going <laughs> to bring it to India and I'm going to aware like I'm going to yes, raise awareness. Yes, you can. That, and and yeah, yeah, actually matter of fact, even if this device is not allowed, you can create your own. You see this yeah. green part? That's a uh, That's uh yeah. that's a board that's a dev board you know that's a board where where you can put your software or your API yeah. or whatever you want to code in it and then you can have your own device which can do things so you know about this already yes i do because uh, this is not available in india and uh, they do not allow this and also they do not allow lock picking uh, kit as well it is available in us and if you want to like uh, take it to india that's okay you can do that but it will not be shipped to india and it's not available in india so hacker community over there is fan of flipper yeah, and you know they want man. to try and it and this thing <laughs> yeah this thing is used more by scammers okay because yeah. this thing is so powerful it can also take your card information okay so i've seen videos where they just go to walmart and just go and tap this device on random stranger's pocket yeah okay yes. and if you tap it on your wallet or their it, pocket it will scan the nfc so our cards yes. now especially in america in, in india it's better it's gpay or upi mm-hmm. whatever so that's a little safer but in in usa everyone is just tapping their phones 
or their smart watches you know they have yes. car in it yes tap. yes so now what remember, happens just, is your phone is like you know you just tap it and your payment is done <laughs> yeah so what that technology yes. is it's just transferring your card data to the payment device okay so there is a sender and there's a receiver so yeah. this device the flipper acts as a receiver then. so mm-hmm. you just tap it it's going to take the data they can you they can then uh order uh, a card a card reader from amazon for like 20 30 and a few dummy cards now the information is in that device and they just swipe the card on the device and now they have a replica of your card they have a clone and they can go and tap it or withdraw money that's how scammers do it by the way i gave out Wait. some uh, bad information <laughs> over here <laughs> but no don't worries don't use it you know cuz uh, uh eventually I, you know you could be called yeah. uh, one of my um, uh, one of my network uh, fellow founder got this device and it actually i think uh, it also captures the rfid uh, if i'm not wrong RFID, it also captures yeah. the rfid and you know he was using using this flipper zero uh, you know those automatic um, i don't know what to call them the when the car goes is automatic uh, garage, door that garage. opens Yes. So this can also be yes. used to operate the garage door. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> It can. And this device can also open Tesla's gas pump. Yes. I mean, it yes. has limitation. It cannot hack the whole car, but it can open <clears throat> your Tesla fuel pump. So imagine you are driving or you are somewhere, you are sitting, you are using your phone taking picture and suddenly it open up. <laughs> and boom, like, what? like how, it, how can they drive this to my car you know That's it will true. be similar to like you know in the transformers movie where you know bumblebee is just driving and the person is just sitting inside doing nothing i can imagine you know things happening like that <laughs> so Absolutely. it is scary to an extent i think uh, as technology is advancing so should our uh, you know proactive measures should also be and we should be able to safeguard ourselves to an extent where we are cognizant ourselves like whatever we can do and let the professional work on the you know technical front and upgrade themselves and figure out you know ways how to protect it maybe you know regular testing enterprise level tools that you mentioned i think this is the way ahead because this is not going anywhere and it is going to increase And now it yeah, has come in it is not aware interview. of these things these are publicly available for like $200 that's it yeah. like you you yeah. can pay $200 and get this device right, right mm-hmm. to your door in USA however in yes. India there could be com- apart from this uh, i would also like to share other set of device i'm not promoting any devices over here <coughs> but there's mm-hmm. the hack fi toolkit so mm-hmm. when you come over here there are a lot of different kind of devices up here You see all these mm. devices are different. So this one over here is a rubber ducky. Then there is the yes. uh, USB malicious cable. I think it's this one or or I, yeah this one. So this one is so scary. Okay, that's the regular charging cable. You can use it in your car. And if yeah. I have this cable in my car, and if you come sit with me in my car and charge your phone, I can have access to your data. Like your data yes. could be transferring to yeah. that tiny little chip in there. and there is a software which will be in my phone from where i can exploit it so yeah. that is that is scary this, <laughs> it is it actually you know there was an episode where uh, uh, it used to be like you should not charge your phone on uh, airports because you know people can steal your data don't use their uh, cables and put it in your yes, phone yes. so it i it's just like that people should be now more aware of uh, hardware hacking yeah 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 hardware devices it's it's so yeah. underrated and and it's so not not in the big picture like people don't even talk about it like only the big youtubers if you just go to youtube yes. you would find a few youtubers two three they have millions of views on it because they have done really nice editing and really nice scripting on it so that's a good job but apart from that people don't care about it. now to Uh, looking at this one, this is a nice picture and demonstration of this rubber mm-hmm. ducky. So there was the uh, this uh, incident which I used to explain in my trainings a lot about throwing the USBs in the parking lot of corporate offices. 
so mm-hmm. there are people who would be you know going on the break to the parking or coming to the office or or you know coming late to the office and they find something on the stairway and they just pick it yeah. and go inside so imagine if there's a usb there so you are not supposed to pick it and just mm-hmm. plug it in your computer cuz maybe you would find someone's personal information but most probably yeah. you're going to just get a malware and once you attach the device in your computer ooh, it's done, done. <laughs> that's it <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. And See, and you know rough. it's just $79. That's that's how cheap <laughs> it is. You know in this this age to get get the stuff. No, it, it's like things are available it is up to the people who want to use it and you know responsible use is something that everyone should be aware of because there are there are many kind of people and we never know what the intentions are and and ethical hackers will have these to uncover like you know whatever vulnerabilities can be found in these and how they can protect uh from getting attacked and then there are hackers those who are bound to use them for the purposes that not attempted for uh so i would like to focus uh, on this part of awareness which i already <coughs> spoke about so uh it is uh, our responsibility to understand this okay as a technical p- person or or as a community leaders we need to make sure that the people around us know about these things like instead of sharing a meme on whatsapp we should be sharing some informative content which can save people a lot of money and a lot and give them some privacy because i have known people in my personal life which i feel sad about they have been hacked for a huge amount like thousands of dollars by by simple things like social engineering and you know some some phishing so what i believe is we need to raise a lot of awareness uh and talking about iot please 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 make sure to update your passwords don't use the regular admin admin or even your name and your date of birth so a lot of people what they do is kumal at 1999 that's my date of birth by the way but i don't have that password so kumal at 1999 would be um, a password for a lot of people that name so you cannot be doing that because that is so simple to guess like a person who knows you they can use this information against you and talking about the other devices please 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 make sure to update your software your firmware and uh uh Yeah that's that's all you can do <laughs> as an end user Absolutely So as we wrap this discussion about the IoT I think uh, we touched upon a lot of things in this discussion and lastly I would uh, like say with great connectivity <laughs> comes greater security So big thank uh, you <laughs> A big thank you to you Kumail for uh, adding the discussion and making this uh, very interesting for our listeners and for all of you stay connected stay secure and keep exploring the tech frontier podcast that we are going on the fifi show thank you so much thank you